Hi, Brums. All right. Hey, guys, thank you so much for coming out on a Friday night. I'm sure the last thing you want to be doing is sitting in a meeting. Um, so we will try and make this short, sweet, and to the point. Um, but we send out a bunch of emails each week, and I know uh, they tend to get a little lengthy. And Holger's told me a hundred times I got I to gotta shorten them up. But figure that verbal directions on some of that stuff goes a little further than just email. So um, thank you for making it. We're going to make it short and sweet, like I said. Um, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, we got all that stuff as far as following us on social media. Um, and then also, if you have any questions, email is usually the best way to go. Um, it's info at foxvalleywrestlingclub.com. Um, my cell phone's on there and we're going to give you some phone numbers at the end as well so you can contact Hogar or Parton if you need anything. Um, but then also the website, I'm sure you guys all know where that's at because you all registered already. So um, like anything, I like to start with the why. Why we do what we do and everything we do revolves around these three things. Uh, so as far as Fox Valley Wrestling Club goes, uh, first and foremost, our goal is to promote the sport. Um, I'm very biased, but I think wrestling is the greatest sport in the world. And we want to share that love with as many kids as possible. Um, goal number two, build the family. Uh, I think more, more than any other club or sport that I've been a part of, uh, Fox Valley is always really focused on the family or aspect of things. And everything we do revolves around building the family. Um, I think if you talk to the 20 plus coaches we have, a lot of those coaches have been around wrestling for a really long time. And they can tell you firsthand, you know, the impact that wrestling has had on their life. And I could say the same. I can tell you story after story. So um, building the family and trying to spread the love of the sport, those are two big goals. Uh, but then last and certainly not least, it should probably be number one. Uh, you'll see it on all of our banners, on our business cards, on the website, virtually everything. Uh, champions in life and champions on the map. Well, and that kind of goes back to what I said about our coaches. Um, we've all been fortunate. Many of us have been fortunate to been, be around wrestling for a very, very long time. And it has impacted us in ways that we never could have imagined. Um, but there's a reason why the champions in life comes first. So obviously we want to raise the level of competition for our kids. Obviously we want to make them stud little wrestlers, right? But champions in life comes first. And so we think of wrestling as like our platform to, uh, to promote our kids and get the best out of them, make them the best version of themselves. So we start out slow with those little bitties, kind of have, them have as much fun as possible. We don't care so much about the wins and losses. We just want them to fall in love with the sport. Um, and then as they get older, after they bought into it, then we start really pushing the competition part. And then hopefully, even by the time they're in middle school, you know, even by, when they're in middle school, our focus is still have fun, fall in love with the sport, because the long-term benefits of being part of wrestling, they start to get more when they're in high school. So our goal is to get them in high school. So champs in life, champs on the mat. Those are our three goals. Anything and everything we do revolves around that. We made a last minute decision today that I'll talk about shortly. And we were trying to decide between two options. And we literally came back to three, these three goals to make the final decision. So yeah, I think it's important to know the why and that's our why. Uh, coaches, Jason Bartels, I saw you on here. Um, John Brum, I know you're on there with the Chidleys. Uh, Zach Clancy, he's, he's one of the coaches for Oswego. Uh, Luis De La Rosa is a new coach this year for us. His daughter, Riley, is going to be joining us. Brandon Grisham is, a, is he's a coach for Oswego Wrestling Club as well, and he's joined the, joined the ranks. Ryan Holger and myself both serve on the board for Fox Valley. Um, Ryan's been around for what, eight years now, Ryan? Yes, eight or nine? Nine. nine years. Wow. Jim Nalos is one of the coaches. Uh, his son has been wrestling for a while with us. Kevin O'Toole is another coach. His son, Seamus, wrestled last year for us. Mike Parton. Mike Parton is the, he, he's the brains behind all this. <laughs> um, he's, he's one of the head coaches as well. He runs uh, the, that group too. You'll see him around a lot. Uh, coach Pitroff. Joined up, joined forces last year with us. Um, Tim Shaw, my man, Tim Shaw. I have known Tim Shaw for over a decade now. Uh, I worked with him back when I was coaching over at Wabonzi Valley. Um, and he was part of the board for Wabonzi Valley Wrestling Club. Um, 
God, I'm so glad to have him on board. Joel, Steve, those guys are also coaches. Their sons are in the program. Joel's kid has been in there. How long is how long has uh, Lincoln been part of the program, Ryan? Two years or three? Uh, this is his fourth year, I think. Fourth? And Stribley's been around for what, five? I think this is his third or fourth year with us. Oh, my gosh. He's been around for a while. And then Jeremy Swanson. So Jeremy, Zach, and Coach Grisham are all coaches for Oswego. Um, and so if you haven't, if you don't know yet, um, Nequa Valley – we were unable to practice out of an equal Valley, which is where we normally practice out of um, in years past. But given the COVID restrictions, we had to find another place. And we have been at push since, uh, since September, um, following different protocols, closed down for, for us time being. And it got to the point where we we're starting to make plans for this season, the regular season that got pushed back to spring. And Coach Swanson graciously opened his doors to us and asked if we wanted to move over to, to Oswego. And it's the best choice we made. We don't have to try and fit 80 kids on one mat and push. Instead, we got three full mats. So thank you, Coach Swanson, Coach Grisham, Grisham and Clancy. Speaking of 80 kids, this is part of the reason why we have 80 kids. Welcome to all the brand new Fox Valley family members. Appreciate you giving it a shot. Um, it's going to be a great year. So thank you. I'm done. Who's up? Uh, I'm up. Uh, so as Adam mentioned, our practices are joint with Oswego. They're all at Oswego East High School this year, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as you presumably know. Uh, the little guys are 630 to 730. And then after that, it gets a little bit crazy. Um, because different groups are ending at different times, depending on which level your kid happens to be in. Um, there's always opportunities to move up a level too, if your kid needs to. Uh, everybody figure out where to get in the building ready. There's three or four families that registered, I think, today, so they probably haven't been there. Uh, but we're going in door 45, which is, I don't know, 50 yards to the right of the main athletic entrance. Um, so when you go in that door, it's, right, it's directly into the wrestling room, so we don't have to wander the halls or anything like that. Uh, this past week, our practices, like they are every year, are open to parents to uh, observe. But then starting next week, we have closed practices just to keep things from being as chaotic. Um, if you need to come in, let us know, and we'll, and we'll figure out a way to figure things out. Or we'll suck you into coaching is what we normally do. That's how we have 20 coaches. Uh, so if you're that person that just needs to be involved, we'd love to have you be involved. Uh, our competitions are completely different this year. If you've been around for a while, you know that we normally go to tournaments pretty much every Sunday, occasionally even on a Saturday. Uh, there's no tournaments allowed this year in Illinois. So instead, what we're doing is round robins, which for lack of better description, are like mini tournaments. Instead of having, you know, 800 kids or 600 kids at an event, we're just going to have like four or five clubs at an event. Uh, we have, I believe, four of them and we're hosting three of them. Uh, so we'll go through that schedule in a little, in a little bit. Uh, so it is a little bit different than in the past. Um, but that's what we got to do to kind of sort of play within the rules here. Uh, and we will be splitting up as well by age in order to keep it so we can fit everybody in the space, basically. Uh, there's a registration for that online. Uh, it's on our website. We just added it on there a couple of days ago. Uh, so you can go in and register for which events you're going to attend. Each week when Adam sends out the uh, email, there'll be some uh, warnings on there for the deadline on when it closes for certain dates. So we have to know at least, you know, four or five days in advance in order to be able to plan out brackets with the other clubs that are visiting us and so forth. Um, what else? Uh, Adam has all these notes about being positive on there. If you've been around Adam, uh, <laughs> it's, it's hard not to be positive. I try to be so damn negative and he just keeps sucking me back into positivity. Damn him. Um, but be positive, be supportive. Uh, once your kid starts wrestling, if they've never wrestled before, there's going to be tears. They are going to cry. They are going to lose. That's fine. Um, they probably don't even want to talk to you or us about it. They might need a little time to breathe, but usually depending on their age, 15, 20 minutes later, they come around and you can talk to them for a couple of minutes again. Uh, but just try to support them when they've lost, support them when they win, obviously those kind of things. Uh, it's best not to yell anything to the refs. Um, especially this year, there's gonna be a lot of high school refs helping us out, younger guys. Uh, but in general, yelling at the ref doesn't make the ref do what you want. It makes the ref do the opposite of what you want. So leave the refs alone, let them do their thing. Uh, we'll try to keep tabs on them as well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything on here. Yeah, the whole positivity thing. 
I think if you guys, I know this is a crazy year and so things are going to look a little different, but anyone who's been around IKWF knows like you go to a wrestling tournament and you see those parents, you see those coaches that they don't represent what Fox Valley represents. You know, they're yelling at their kids. They're, they're yelling at the refs. They're just not keeping it classy. Right. Um, that does zero good. Granted, those parents are probably just, or those coaches think that what they're doing is working and helping, but, and it's, it's hard when your kid's out there to not get emotionally invested, um, but that's not doing any good, I promise you, and um, that's not what we're going to do at Fox Valley. I don't think that's going to be an issue this year because of the way things are, are, uh, are, are set up, but next year, when we have 800 kids at a tournament and you got 16 to 2,000 parents in the stands, it gets crazy. So Fox Valley, we represent ourselves well. Who's doing this one? Martin? Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, things have been changing. So the protocol for masks, I just want to make sure we're all clear on this. So according to the IDPH, um, when the wrestlers are not in contact, meaning they're not on the mat wrestling, they need to have masks on to help with the mitigation. Once they step onto a mat, it is 100% optional. In fact, they actually encourage the masks to be off due to them being a possible choking hazard. Um, but again, if you know you or your child is not comfortable taking their mask off, they are more than welcome to continue to practice with it on. It is just, it is optional. As you've already noticed too, you know, we've been doing temperature checks as you guys walk in. That's another phase that we're, um, we've been doing since September when we started with our preseason during the height of COVID. Um, it's just one, another way that we can help as you guys come in, we can keep track of that as well. Um, water bottles, you do have to bring your own. We highly encourage making sure that all of our wrestlers have a full water bottle at practice. And then um, as well with cleaning and disinfecting, please make sure as soon as they get home, they are out of their clothes from practice. They are getting cleaned up. Um, aside from COVID, that helps stop the spread of all of the nasty funk that comes with wrestling. Um, additionally too, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea since we're off these couple of days, maybe. Mike, we lost. Pardon. There we go. Pardon, you were talking and no one could hear you. And I don't think we still can hear him. All right. Well, let's, let's pick up for him. Uh, All right. Be clean. Uh, showering with soap every single day after practice. Liquid soap is best. The brand doesn't really matter. A lot of people use Dial or they'll use uh, uh, bleh. This one we use on our house. Hey, Ryan. Ryan, there's a soap called Defense Soap. That's what we use. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You can just get it on Amazon. It comes in bar or liquid form, but Defense Soap is is probably the best stuff to use. I, I just thanks, Tim. I completely drew a blank. Yeah, we use Defense. In fact, we use it year round now. We started using it for wrestling. We just use it for all our sports now, which is yeah. works great. Uh, it's all natural. Um, the certification is online. So uh, mm -hmm. as you come and drop your kid off, there's a QR code on the door if you haven't already seen that, or you can get to it from our website. You can do it that way. Or if you've synced the calendar up, if you synced our team calendar up with your personal phone calendar, the link is automatically in there as well. So it's any of those places it'll be. For those of you that have middle school kids, uh, start making them do it. They all have phones. There's no reason they can't scan the QR code when they come in. I make my older kids do it. Obviously, if you got younger kids that don't have phones, obviously you got to do it for them. But do that every day. That helps us not only play by the rules that the high school requires us to play by, but if anything did happen and we have to figure out who was there on what days, that does serve as our attendance as well. So we know exactly who was there. We don't have to sit there and try to think back five days ago. I would say, too, the easiest thing with that link. Can you guys hear me? Yep, you're good. The easiest thing would just be to bookmark that link, too, as well. So like every, you don't have to scan it every day. Once you scan it one time and go to the site, just add it as a bookmark. That's going to make life a lot easier to, to do that. Uh, Coach yeah. Bartels, you have a question? Yeah, just going back to the cleanliness. Uh, if you don't want to buy like the defense dope and stuff like that, you, you can simply just buy uh, baby wipes. If Especially if you have a baby, we have we still have one. And honestly, I was a coach for a decade in varsity and honestly, for, we used to buy packs and packs. And in between every single round of tournaments, we had our kids wiped down after five minutes, they had to wipe down like every single round and you don't have to wipe down your whole body, but if you just wipe down your face, 
and your arms, usually that's where stuff's going to spread is mm -hmm. mostly it's going to be on your face and your arms. So if you at least just attack that first, I mean, it can, it can save a lot. It can really save a room. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And he's saying that for everyone who doesn't understand, he's saying that in addition to showering after practice every night, like this is like during breaks of practices or tournaments, you can do that. Yeah. On top of that. So before you even get home, it's kind of like on top of that. So it's basically attacking it right away. Good call. All right. I guess I'll take this one. All right. So in years past, we've always had groups. Like we've had our little kids groups. We've had our wildcat groups and our big cat groups. And we kind of doing something similar this year. Um, we have three, we actually have four different curriculums for Fox Valley that are continually getting developed and changed and updated and improved. Um, but with those four curriculums, we got to make sure that kids can kind of fit into where they belong. Um, our goal for that is to kind of make kind of like karate, like you, you black belt, you got to do certain things in order to get to a black belt, kind of similar here with Fox Valley. Um, so we've grouped our kids into these flexible differentiated groups that are based on two things, age and experience. Um, our group one is run by Coach Grisham, Coach Holger, Coach Bartels, and then some other dads that are there on a regular basis run that. That's our pre-K and first grade. They go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but you pick two days a week. Um, the reason why we're doing the two days a week is because at that age, this is, I mean, Jason, I don't know, maybe you can talk more about your philosophy about the little kids. Why don't you take over real quick? Martels. Uh, honestly, for the little kids, I think you just have to, you don't really, I wouldn't set any expectations. I mean, I, I came, come from a family that my dad was a head wrestling coach. I was a head wrestling coach at varsity level, but my two boys honestly aren't where I was at that age. So like, I, like, I try to just keep an open mind. Like you can't really, you can't really expect what you're going to do from your kids. Like you can go in there and they're all either what, four to seven-year-olds in that group yep. roughly. Yeah. So it's going to be really hard. Even in a small group this last week, I noticed like you, you have the other two groups going, it's loud. You have parents there. I know that's not necessarily there. They're not necessarily going to be there for every week, but it's really hard to get the kids going. So I think the biggest thing is just to keep them interested at this age. So if you just, you don't, they don't, you don't, we don't need to walk away them understanding what a single leg is or a double leg is, but if they at least understand the concept of this is roughly what it's supposed to look like, this is roughly what it's supposed to feel like. If they get the idea and feel, then once we get them to, towards group two, they can understand a little bit more in advance on, but if they just understand the feel and what it's supposed to look like, they don't need to nail a single leg or nail a, a double leg or nail a stand up exactly perfect, but they get the idea. That's what we're kind of looking for, at least in my opinion in that. Yeah. And those little kids, I mean, if you looked at the curriculum, it's very minuscule. It's, it's maybe you show one technique a day, but the rest of it's like tumbling, athletic drills, games, stuff that gets them into the wrestling feel, but they're also just trying to hook them, have fun with it. It keeps the kid active, right? Um, group two, Coach Parton runs that one. Coach, you want to kind of talk about that at all? Sure. So this is where we start to take it up a little bit, but we're still moving at a pace to where now we're talking about the fine tuning parts of those moves. So, you know, as they progress, so the younger group and, you know, as they progress. All right. He's paused again. <laughs> Coach Parton's, we can't hear you again. So I'll take over. Uh, so group two, it, it, it's second through eighth grade. Now, just because you're an eighth grader doesn't mean you don't belong in group two. That could be eighth graders that are only have, this could be their first year. It could be their second year. Heck, it could be their fourth year. But kind of like the black belt system, if we don't feel that you've mastered certain skills, we don't want to push you to group three where you're not going to get some experience and some success. Because group three, especially when it comes to technique, it runs at a certain level that unless you have certain skills down, it's going to be way over your head. It's like trying to teach a kid to divide before you taught them how to add and subtract is the best way I think of it. Um, so group two tends to be a big group, especially now that we have so many new kids. Um, and then as far as group three goes, I don't know if coach Swanson is in here. If he's one of those cell phone ones, if you are, you can say something Swanson, but group three is more for our experienced kids. who've been wrestling for a while or just our older kids. Um, who pick up things super quick and depending on the size and our groups, the kids who are in each group, uh, we kind of push, we, we push those kids as much as we can. They do a lot more live wrestling. 
the technique's a little higher advanced. And again, they have a curriculum that they got to get through. Um, one note that I want to make about the two groups. Say you have a seventh or an eighth grader, maybe even some sixth graders in group two who run from 6.30 to 8. There might be a day where we say, hey, you know what, today, based on the groups and based on what we're showing in group three, I think we want to move you up, to, up a group. So they might stay till 8.30 some days. Um, and then also there might be days where they stay with that group two the whole time, but then they decide, oh, I'm going to go jump in group three and go live with them. Um, Cause by the time group two is done, usually group three starts their live wrestling. Um, it's kind of how we have it organized this year. So if you have any questions specifically about the times, like when your kiddo is going to be done, let us know. We're still trying to figure this out as far as how we run two clubs at the same time with 80 kids in three different groups. Um, Cause in years past, we would split it up a little better, but welcome to 2020. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> We're making the most of it. Yeah. There's, um, there's probably like five <coughs> kids that are in group two right now that could possibly be in group three. Um, but they didn't wrestle all winter long. So they're kind of rusty. So we started them there and we've asked them a couple of times about if they want to come drill with group three afterwards. And so far, most of them, at least when I ask them, they've declined, but sooner or later they're going to be ready and they're going to say yes. And then we're going to have to move them up. So yeah, you got a seventh, eighth grader. They're probably on that fence. Yeah. It just goes back to that being flexible. Right. So, all right. What's next equipment. Hoger Parton. Hoger, why don't you do this one since Parton's kind of gone. Uh, sure. So for experienced families, this one's pretty easy, but for the new folks, um, this is all the stuff that, that you're going to need wrestling shoes. Uh, obviously you can wrestle in socks, especially if you're a little guy and you want to get it going, but at some point you're going to want to get shoes. Uh, if you do send them in socks in the meantime, use those grippy socks. Like you get from like the jumpy places. Um, but eventually you're going to want to get them some shoes. Um, and if you need really small ones, let me know. I might have some that all my kids grew out of by now. <laughs> I might, uh, headgear. Um, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but a good portion of the kids don't wear headgear. It's not required for practice, but it is required for competition. My own kids wear it every single day. All three of them wear it every day, every practice. And I've just done it that way since they were five. And that way nobody complains and whines to me about the headgear. Cause the last thing you want is for them to put headgear on for the first time at a tournament. And then they're all distracted and they can't hear and they're not used to it. And it's fidgety and it doesn't fit right. So I'm good with everybody just wearing it from the get go, but it's not required until you show up on a competition day. Uh, Mike mentioned the water previously. Um, bring more water than you are currently bringing, especially the kids in that group three. Every one of them is leaving with an empty water bottle, which probably means they're not bringing enough or they're not drinking enough at home before they get there. Um, we provide uh, a warm up, uh, So uh, Mike has those on order. He'll talk about it a little bit for those that haven't filled out the size sheet yet. So t-shirt and shorts we provide uh, and you keep that. And then we have singlets that we loan out and then we collect them back at the end of the year. So we'll provide those to you if you're going to be competing on the weekends. Uh, we'll provide them to you and you'll, you'll just give them back to us uh, in June. Anybody with braces has to wear a mouth guard. That's not an optional thing. Uh, the braces are, it's not only painful for you, but it's painful for the kid that's wrestling you if you got braces with no mouth guard. Uh, so get a mouth guard, make sure you get one that's double, that's top and bottom and has no tethering hooks on it. It's got to fully fit into your mouth. If you're not sure about it, see me at practice um, or any one of the kids that has braces. I'm going to show you what one looks like. Knee pads are totally optional. They're not super common, but you can wear them if you want to or if you have an issue on your leg. Uh, and then if you have long hair, which I don't think anybody really does this year, so we're, we're good there. Uh, but if you got long hair, then you might want to wear a hairnet to, to contain that. But I think we're good on that. Uh, as far as the building uh, goes, um, we have great janitorial staff at OE. Uh, mats are getting cleaned all the time there. Um, in order to keep the mats clean, you need to be wearing wrestling shoes. Or like I said, if you don't have shoes yet, socks. But don't wear your gym shoes on the mats. I think everybody's been good about that so far. Um, don't practice in the same clothes today that you wore yesterday. That's how germs spread. Throw in the laundry every single time. Uh, in fact, the shoes, usually about once a month, we throw the shoes in the, in the washing machine as well. Uh, and then the headgear, I usually wipe that down. Uh, with uh, like a Clorox wipe every couple of weeks kind of thing. Just, just, I just feel better about it just because. Um, make sure they have a bag to put all their stuff in. Make sure their name is on everything, literally everything. Put your name on it, shoes, headgear, everything. Uh, anything without your name is going to get mixed up. 
uh, especially when we start giving everybody shorts and t-shirts that look identical, write your name on it immediately because that's all going to get mixed up, mixed up as soon as they pull it off uh, to go on for uh, a match at a tournament. Uh, fingernails got to be cut. No long fingernails. Always have to be short. Um, and you cannot wrestle if you have any kind of skin infection. You need to either have the doctor check it out or give us a letter saying that it's okay uh, if you have some, if you want to wrestle with some kind of you know skin abrasion thing. Um, if anybody gets injured at all um, outside of practice, just let us know. We like to keep tabs on that stuff so we know uh, when people come back if we got to do something different with them or not um, after they've been injured in some way. Yeah, the only thing I would add to that, you know, is wrestling gets a bad rap for whole, the whole skin infection thing, right? Ringworm, uh, impetite, all that stuff. I will just say that skin infections are very, very easy to prevent. Skin infections are very, very easy to treat, but they also are very, very easy to spread. So we want to stay on top of it. If you guys do your, your due diligence, it won't be an issue. Um, but the last thing we want is to have it spread and then somebody just, just takes one person to not do it their due diligence. And then next thing you know, we got a handful of kids that can't wrestle. Um, but yeah, and the injuries and the health concern stuff. If you have a kiddo that has any special needs of any sort that we need to be aware of, please let us know. Um, we'd rather be proactive about it than wait and be reactive. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, I was going to say, the one big thing is, is like when we, we're talking about no outside shoes on the mats, please make sure none of the children are wearing their um, wrestling shoes outside of the actual wrestling room. Don't let them walk from the car into the wrestling room and then any sort of blacktop dirt, shards of glass salt in the winter time it will absolutely destroy the wrestling mats just one right. little piece can eat a hole through it so yeah good point I, i've uh, seen it a couple times and i know a couple parents gave me side eyes when i told them that those shoes should never see the outside of a wrestling room yeah <laughs> and i know yeah. how much how expensive they are but that's the rule of thumb that, that's easiest to go by i think everybody yeah. should do what uh what little weston does he puts his brother's slides over his wrestling shoes i think it's brilliant Oh, there you go. And they're there already tied when he gets there. It's perfect. He's a genius. Smart yeah, yeah. Like, better ever. I'd like to it, second coach. I'd like to second coaches ho what ho Coach Hoger said earlier about making sure you wipe down your wrestling shoes and your headgear. That's those are two items that are oftentimes forgot about. Um, usually, just think about hey, take your clothes off, make sure you shower, make sure you wash your clothes. But your headgear, honestly, that's probably one of the most important issues, just because you're going to be head to head so often and the same thing your shoes it's obviously touching dirt so if you wipe at least wipe the bottoms of your shoes and your headgear i try to do it as, as as much as possible with some type of wipe that's going to help a lot so i'm glad that coach hoger mentioned that yeah all right thank you guys appreciate it so as far as spirit wear and gear goes um we every kiddo will get a set of shorts and t-shirt from fox valley it has the fox valley stuff on there the only thing is in our registration this year we can blame Coach Hoger. Um, there was no size forms on there. Shame on him. Yes. Um, so please make sure that you fill this size form out. It's in the email and we need it ASAP because um, we have to get that order in. And the longer we wait, the longer it takes to get them in. That will take a while to get in. So let's get on that size form, please. We can make sure that you guys get the correct sizes. Spirit Wear Shop is more of a customizable gear shop. Um, in years past, we've, we've kind of outsourced to different, to different uh, custom, um, companies that do that specialize in the gear shop stuff. Um, this year, with the whole COVID stuff, we found out that things are, the turnover rate is ridiculous. So fortunately, Coach Parton's wife has her own little business and she does stuff like this. So there is a gear shop on Fox Valley Wrestling Club's website. And here, I'll even show it to you. Um, if you go to our website, there's a spirit wear shop right here. And she's got all sorts of goodies in here that she, the nice thing is she does a two week turnaround. So anything you guys want, you can order online um, and it'll be back in two weeks for you. And um, pictures are just a couple of the things. There's more than that on there. I just couldn't fit it all on ours. When you click on yeah. it, it'll go to a bunch of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then I do just want to mention too there. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, coach. What's All up? right, there we go. See, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Um, That's right. We do have two options, too, with the gear shop. Um, I can deliver it personally to you for practice, so that obviously saves on some shipping, um, or you can just select regular shipping. Um, she didn't provide the code there. Awesome. 
And then very generously, they are donating 10% back to the club. So thank you. That Google form, that size form, just so you see what it looks like, it's this, it's in the email. It's short, it's sweet, but we need everyone to do it so that we get you the right size or you're going to get stuck with a triple X. Deal? <laughs> All right. Um, competition schedule. This is the thing that we did talked about at like six o'clock today that we were making some revisions on. Um, and welcome to 2020, 2021, because COVID changes everything, right? Um, so our goal was to get you a competition every weekend. Uh, we decided not to do Mother's Day because, well, it's Mother's Day. Um, but we do have a competition every weekend throughout the season. Um, we have a combination of round robin competitions, and then we have one tournament we're going to go to. Um, so the round robin competitions, like I said, uh, like Coach said earlier, it's kind of like a mini tournament. The nice thing about this one this year is that in years past, you show up to a tournament with 800 kids and they just throw you in based on age and weight. This year, uh, we are requiring that the coaches submit rosters are in advance, a long, long enough for us to get kids grouped together. But one of the criteria is they also include their experience. So in many years, but years past, I would tell parents like, man, you know what, maybe your kiddo's not ready to wrestle. Maybe they're not ready to compete yet. That's okay. Cause every kid's a little different. Some little kids are ready to go out there and kick some butt. Some little kids are ready to go get their butt kicked and still smile. And then when you get to the middle school level, there's a whole identity piece, right? And that's a whole nother ball game. But at least this year we get to group everybody by experience. And so if there was ever a year to just throw your kid out there, <laughs> this would be the year. Um, we have one round robin competition at Midwest Battlegrounds in New Lenox. Um, that's our very first one. We're going to let them screw it up so that we can figure out how to do it right. And then on the 25th, we're going to do one at Oswego East. We also have one at Oswego East on the 16th and the 23rd. Um, like Coach said, those are going to be split sessions. And depending on how many kids come from all these different teams, because there's anywhere from six five teams to six teams, you know, four or five, six teams are coming in. Um, so we could have 150 kids. We could have a hundred kids just depends on each club's roster. Um, and then we're going to communicate out specifics as we get closer to each one, but we have to get those rosters first. Um, the change that we made was the John Davis. So the John Davis tournament, the kids open is been a tournament that's been going on for a long time. Um, and it always happened to take place on the same weekend that we would do our Fox Valley annual trip to the Dells. And so I don't know the last time Fox Valley went, but they didn't go last year. I know that. Um, that I've been here. Yeah. So this year, I guess one of the benefits, because John Davis is a good tournament, don't get me wrong, but one of the benefits of this whole COVID thing is that now we can actually go to it and now it's being hosted in the Dells. So we're going to actually combine our, fam our, our annual family trip to the Dells with the John Davis tournament. Um, they literally just posted all the information on that today at about noon. I got the email. So we were initially just thinking, ah, we'll just send a few kids to that and we'll do a Dells trip later um, to that crusade tournament uh, on Memorial Day weekend. We changed that. We change that. So we are now doing the John Davis tournament. It is, um, it is May 1st. Weigh-ins are on, the, on May 30th. We'll talk more about that in a second. But so these are the dates. I don't know if I want to take a picture of this, but these are the dates. That's not to say something won't change. That's not to say we won't throw something in there at the end of the season. But this is what we're at as of today, as of about 7.30 today. This is where we were sitting. What else we got? Um, mark your calendars. Most most of our uh, competitions have a deadline. Um, any of those round robin competitions, we need those rosters and we need you to register online by the Wednesday before at the very latest, um, preferably earlier. And you can actually register for all of them at once. Um, if you go on the website and actually here, I'll even show you. If you go to the Fox Valley website, it says tournament registration. You just click on that. And it takes your rate to where to where to register for each of these competitions. And you can register now for all of them at once. Um, so I put the deadline in there for each of these individual competitions. 
Um, but at the same time, that's, the, the, the John Davis tournament has a cap to it. And now that it is public, everyone's going to be trying to, to register. And as soon as they reach that cap, they close down registration. So ASAP. I would say by the end of this weekend, it's probably like you need to get on there and get get, get registered if you're planning on going. Um, if you don't do it by the end of this weekend, you know, maybe try later, but there's no guarantee you'll get in. Um, and with that, we are going to go to the Wilderness Resort for the Fox Valley family annual trip. Um, we usually do it at the Kalahari. That's a story in and of itself. So I'll be happy to explain it some other date. That's just not going to work out. Um, so we'll be at Wilderness. Um, the room block is not available. There is not a room block this close to the date, but you can still register individually and get your own room. Uh, you'll want it for that night of May 1st. Um, we do have some other things coming up. We'll have an annual mom's night out. We have our annual end of the season banquet. This year, since it's nice out, we might think we're trying to do some sort of event. I don't know, maybe a kayak trip and something in the park or something. I don't know. We'll do something fun for our end of the season banquet. So more information on that is forthcoming. Any questions? We've talked about an awful lot already. So any questions? I should probably pause. Uh, I'm going to add to, we didn't mention it, but when we decided to make everybody or have the John Davis be really for everybody as the main thing, we took that May 2nd new Lennox thing off the schedule. So anybody who did already register for that because some people were already ahead of the curve and registered for some of these i will refund you for that this weekend for that one um if you were one of those people thank you coach and yeah the john davis if you register for that on fox valley's website or the crusade which we could still send some kids to the crusade if you decide you want to go um those are going to be zero dollars on our website john davis and the great crusade are separate registrations because they're not run through us all right. Any questions? So to clarify, the the family weekend at the Dells is now the May first weekend at yes at a different resort at what was it the Wilderness? It's at the Wilderness. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Great question. Yes. And this was that decision that we made today, last hour and a half, um, and it was a tough decision. I mean, there is a lot of things working against us at the Kalahari. The Kalahari, actually, the room block that we had was through a third party, and the contract through the Kalahari th fell through. And so we already had a backup plan ready to go. We already have a room block ready. We had all sorts of things set in, set in place. And then I see the email from the John Davis. And so we just had to decide as a club well, what is best for our kids. And the nice thing about the John Davis tournament, and like I said, we haven't been there. We, I don't know when Fox Valley's been there. But after looking through everything that they had to offer, given our population of kids and so many new kids, they have two divisions. They have the open division, which is more for like your, more for like our kids. And then they have the elite division for state qualifiers, state placers, like there's different criteria for the elite divisions. So I think it'll be a good, a good fit for our kids versus the crusade, which would have been elite kids from all over the US. So we made that decision just recently so it is a fox valley family favorite we do have a little fest festivities always at the end of the uh the tournament um the tournament for the open division actually ends around 12 30 which is awesome because then all of our kids can go back to uh the wilderness resort we will have i think two cabanas reserved we'll have food we'll have um some adult beverages along with some kid beverages available um there is a link on here, and this link is actually on the IKWF website. So if you go to the IKWF website, you open open up, it'll show you a John Davis link. This is where you have to go to register. So I will email more of this out here probably tonight so that you guys can get on it this weekend. Um, but make sure you register it as soon as possible. Make sure you register for the open division. I don't think we have a whole lot of kids that need to be in the elite division. And if they do, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, you're gonna to wanna to reserve a room for the wilderness. You can just go right online, go to Wilderness Resort and do your reservation on there. Um, some of you might wanna do a two day rental and that's fine. That was another benefit of making, it, making the change because the, the backup plan forced us to do a two day rental, which we didn't really want. 
Um, satellite weigh-ins are nice because now we can do it at New Lenox on Friday night rather than having to drive all the way up to the Dells on, for the crusade. Um, so this is just in general a better situation. Um, some, there is a lot of COVID-19 requirements that you have to do and it's all on the website. There's a screening that has to be done. They're only allowing one spectator and one coach per athlete. So if mom and dad want to go, mom, dad, one of you got to get your coaching uh, credentials done. Um, otherwise, <laughs> you're stuck. Uh, but everyone is invited. Um, in years past, this has been more of a father-son trip. Uh, this year, it's, we're opening it up to everybody. Um, anybody and anybody can come, be part of the festivities, bring the whole family, bring the kids. Um, yeah, we're going to have some fun. And even if the, we also are inviting past Fox Valley people who are busy playing baseball, busy playing soccer, busy doing lacrosse or football, whatever, if they can't do the tournament, that's fine. You're still welcome to just come and join in on Saturday night our Saturday afternoon at, at the wilderness. Um, but more information on the actual John Davis tournament is on the IKWF website. Check that out. But if there's one thing I could tell you, it would be if you're going to wrestle, get registered right away. And if you're going to do the whole Saturday night thing, which is why we go up there in the first place, get your room as soon as you can. Any questions on the Dells trip? No, I, I got a comment for you, Adam. So. In case, somebody, in case somebody starts looking at, like, the John Davis tournament history, they mm -hmm. will allow coaches this year. Historically, when it's in Springfield, there are no coaches allowed on the mat. The kids just go do their own thing by themselves, and you're in the stands. So if, if you got a, a parent that's nervous, this year they will have coaches on the mats. Probably the only year. Thanks, Brandon. I do have a quick question. So yeah, go ahead. At um, so the John Davis tournament you said is is five one. The pre the previously it was Memorial Day weekend, right? So those are two different tournaments, right? Okay, the trip itself, the Dells trip, the family Dells trip was yes, Memorial Day weekend. yes. And it so we had fun. things fall through on Memorial Day weekend with the contract, and so we had to make a change anyways, and then we decided to make this change as well because it was just better for the club and the kids. Okay, is that tournament out completely? So will there need to be another trip to Wisconsin in the future? So the Great Crusade is not out completely, no. Um, now, is it going to be something that our coaches will all go to like we would for this? That hasn't been determined yet. Um, if you have a kiddo that you know you want to take to that Great Crusade tournament, by all means, you are welcome to do that. Um, the nice thing about that is you don't have to have an IKWF or USA Wrestling coaching credentials to be on the mat and help your kid be your coach. Um, but for John Davis, you do. Um, so by all means, if you want to still do the Great Crusade, do it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just be aware that that's a, that is a national level tournament that will bring in kids from all over the U.S. that are usually pretty elite level. The very nice thing about both John Davis and the Great Crusade, though, for you specifically there's a girls division for both of them well, just, yeah. just a thought just a thought any other questions i'm going to open it up for questions at the end too so all right i have to do a shameless plug uh west suburban girls wrestling club the mission is very similar to ours find that ironic <laughs> um this is the first ever girls wrestling club in the state of illinois uh, we have a consortium, I like to call it, of clubs around, this, around the West Suburban area, uh, Fox Valley, Oswego, Naperville Wrestling Club, Tomcats, and actually there's been several other clubs who have reached out who want to get involved as well. And, you know, the story behind West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club is for years and years and years, our clubs and our coaches have been recruiting girls. And the thing is, there's not, there's, there's girls out here who jump in. You know, there are some girls out there who are, wired special to where they can see a group full of guys and they have no problem getting out there and beating up some boys but i can tell you from experience we could recruit girls who are blue in the face and the second they walk into the room full of guys it just scares them off um and that's sad because wrestling has a lot of to offer that other half of the population so our solution was these clubs that have all kind of experienced the same thing decided to jump on board work together 
And our plan is to send every single girl that is part of our club to the West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club. Um, but then COVID hit. And so we kind of had to change things. And so instead of having West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club be a separate entity this year, this year, instead of that, doing that, we're doing Sunday clinics as kind of like a soft opening. Um, we do think that this is something that will be groundbreaking. We're hoping to have 100 plus girls in the next few years. Um, and the other thing that is different about West, West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club is that it will have head coaches that will always be a female head coach. Um, we have some close ties with some, some college programs for girls around the area between North Central College and Aurora University um, and even McKendry. And we always will have a pipeline for girls coaches. Um, so this year, we're going to have all girls clinics at Push Wrestling Facility, which is over on the corner of 59 and kind of like 88 area. Um, those are only going to be a one hour thing because we want to just be in out. We want to maybe show a little bit of wrestling, but the whole point is just to garner interest for the sport for these girls who may never have never have done it before. Um, so if you know anybody who would be remotely interested in at least giving it a shot, check out the website. It's West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club .com. Super easy to remember. Um, and that's that's my plug. It's going to be awesome. It's the start of something special. What was the age levels on that? Age level for this year, since it's a soft opening, we are doing second grade through high school. Now, if you got a younger one, I don't foresee us turning anyone away. Um, but Bartels, I'm talking to you. Um, but also we want to keep in mind what the clientele is, who's actually coming in. So you bring in a pre-K kiddo, but then they have a 12th grader coming in too. We're just going to have to get creative about how to handle that practice, right? Which Got is it. fine with me. I'm all about it. So good question. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Uh, when thinking about whether or not we could even consider, obviously Grace has already registered with Fox Valley. Um, and she's that girl that you're talking about, right? But yep. we, when thinking about it, aren't most of our, or all of our tournaments on Sundays? So we probably wouldn't be able to make that. Great question. Yes. So like I said, big picture, our goal was to have West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club launch this year, full on club, just like Fox Valley, just like Oswego, but it's a separate entity where Fox Valley would, would say, oh, Grace, you're gonna sign up with Fox Valley? Great, you can come to Fox Valley's practices, but these two days a week, you're gonna go to West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club. Oh, and on Sundays, when there's a tournament, you're gonna compete with West Suburban Girls Wrestling Club with your head coach. So you really be kind of part of two families, right? Um, that's just not gonna happen this year because of the way that the tournaments are set up um, and the competitions are set up. So down the road, there won't necessarily be that conflict um, with competitions versus these clinics. Um, but we had to pick a day. And Saturdays are very difficult for a lot of other sports. We initially had Saturdays, um, but then we just made the decision that, no, we, we better stick with Sundays because that's, that's less competition with sports. Right. So, so next winter, the girls club will be practicing weeknights, just like the boys do. Um, but this week, this year is a little bit different. We also have the ability with the girls club. Um, you could do the whole fall, spring or you can do a la carte. You can just come to like one or two of the days. Uh, you don't have to come to the whole thing or sign up for the whole thing. You could just show up at the door too. That's an option. Yeah. Someone wants to just come to one or two and check it out and they're competing elsewhere the other weekends. That's okay. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Yep. All right. Other info. We're almost done. Uh, we have some families who still need to get their USA wrestling athlete membership. Please make sure that gets done ASAP. Um, we are not allowed to have you on the mat if you don't have it um, for insurance reasons, liability reasons, and X, Y, and Z. So please make sure that gets done. Um, weekly update emails. You'll see those usually on Fridays, maybe Saturdays. Just depends on the weekend. Um, there's a calendar feed on the website if you want to um, get to that. Coach Hoger said label everything. Please, please, please label everything. Bring their own water bottles. Heck, if you've got a bag that you can put everything in, put everything in it, make sure it gets closed. Um, please. 
Uh, like I said, with the special needs or health concerns, let us know. We want to be proactive about that as much as possible. Um, academic expectations and support. Uh, the reason why the student athlete is hyphenated with student first is because they should be a student first and especially comes in with our middle school population. Um, being a middle school teacher myself, I have absolutely no problem saying, sorry, no practice for you today. You see that table over there, get going. Um, if they gotta do schoolwork at practice, I'm fine with it. Let's make that happen. But I need your help on that because obviously I can't check their grades unless they're at Fisher. Um, what else we got? Photographer, videographer, I'm always looking for someone to take photos so that I don't have to do it on my cell phone during competitions. If you're interested, let me know. Um, wrestling literature, I had some articles that I set out, sent out earlier, especially for those new families. If you want to check that out, they are good reads. And then interested in coaching. Gosh, we could use all the help we can get. It's like herding cats sometimes. Um, like, like coach said, we are closing practices starting Monday. Um, and that is for a variety of reasons. Um, if there are extenuating circumstances and you need to be in there, obviously let us know. Um, it's not like we're super strict on it, but there are a lot of reasons why we have to have closed practices. But one way to bypass that closed practice uh, situation is to get your coaching stuff. There is a quite a rigmarole of stuff you got to go through in order to get certified. Um, and if you are at all interested, feel free to stick around after this meeting. Oh my gosh, I got to hustle. And I will give you more information on that. Um, but yeah, we are happy to have you coach. These are our sponsors. Got a couple kiddos who are, or a couple sponsors who are in this meeting right now. Thank you, Tim Shaw. Thank you, Ken Karn. I don't know if you're in here, but thank you. I also, yeah, there's a lot of them in here. Questions? Fox Valley Wrestling Club, there's the email. There are our cell phones, Coach Parton, Coach myself, and Coach Hoger's on there. And then also Coach Swanson and Coach Grisham are the head honchos for Oswego. So if you have any questions for them, you can reach out to them as well. That's all I got, I think. Yep, that's all I got. Any questions, except for those people who want to stick around about the coaching stuff? I have a question. How many parents can come to the meet when it's at Oswego or New Linux? Is it one-to-one? -one? Great question. Um, I don't want to say for sure what it's going to be because things change, right? We're learning that. But as it stands right now is it's one parent. One parent right now. One spectator. Good is question. That per is that per athlete? That's per athlete. So if you have two wrestlers, you can have both parents? Everyone but you, Jason. You can only have one for your 800 kids, but everybody else can have one for each. Yes. I, or, I, you said not for sure. I, like doing the math, I don't think we can even have one. We'll talk about it. It just depends on the rosters, right? Because we, we'll find out each week how many kids are coming. And then we also have to account for the number of coaches. We also have, we have a lot to account for in, re in regards to room capacity. Um, and so depending on the restrictions and depending on the protocols that we have to follow, each week might look a little different. Just depends. On a related note, we might wanna try streaming some of the mats. So if you're interested in helping us with that, <laughs> we might need volunteers for that. If we, if we might end up doing that if we need to, if there's a really big turnout, we may have to live video stream the mats uh, for everybody depending on yeah but suzanne to answer your question too we, we could get creative and say sorry it's a nice day outside so parents feel free to come but you're only allowed to come in when your kiddo's wrestling something to that degree it just kind of depends so i don't want to say a hard this is what it is i'm sorry i hope that answers it any other questions All right, I will try and send this out to you guys. Uh, just a reminder, please get registered as soon as you can for the John Davis. Uh, please get online and book a room as soon as you can for the wilderness. Um, they have, I believe, 53 rooms available right now for those, for those double queen beds. So the first 53, get the good ones. That's all we got for you. Take care, thanks for showing up.
on a Friday night. Yeah. Anybody else that wants to stick questions. around and ask questions are welcome to do so, but the rest of you are dismissed. Class is over. Thanks, guys. Thank hey, you. Guys. Looking forward to it. Hey, did someone have a couple more questions today here? Yeah, any questions, you guys can stick around. That's absolutely fine. Any coaches that want to stick around or any parents that want to be coaches, stick around and I'll chat with you too. And everyone else, class is over. Look at that, nine o'clock. That's pretty good. All right. Uh, was it Desiree? Who who asked who asked that question? Is that? Uh, that was my wife. Um, but I had the question. Oh, what's up? Um, how's it going, Adam? It's going good, Coach. How you doing? Uh, doing all right. Um, I had a question for you. So, um, I, I I did give some thought to assisting with the coaching, but I'm just curious. What what is the commitment? Uh, your as far as commitment for the ret for getting certified, it there's like a background check. There's the there's two certifications you have to do. The background checks every other year. One of the certifications is one time only, and the other certification is every year. As far as the time commitment, like what I'm expecting out of you, I expect you to be there seven days a week <laughs> or eight hours a day. No, Man, wh whenever you can be there, we will take you. If you can show up one day a week for an hour, we'll take you. If you can show up to every single practice and you want to run something, we'll take you. We need all that. We'll take any help we can get. Okay, cool. And then um, even though I'm coaching right now, I, I'd still have to do all the background stuff still. Yeah. I mean, you um, might have done the uh, and you might have done the copper certification through high school, but I, I, I think so. The okay. safe sports, I think you do already. Did you do safe sports? What's that? You might have done the safe sports for high school, if I remember correctly. Uh, I mean, I do whatever. I, I don't remember that name, but, but, you know, they have us do the requirements for, for you know, because I teach as well. So you got to have a background yeah. for that as well. I'm a teacher too, and I had to do the certification. I did the Same whole here. high school coaching thing. I mean, yeah. So we're the governing body, USA Wrestling, is what decides what we have to do, not okay. IHSA, none of that. So yeah, there's still certification that has to be done through USA Wrestling. And unless that's done, you can't even be, you're not supposed to be in the room with the kids. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at on that. Any other questions? Who else we got in here? I can't even see participants. Eight of us. Hey, Marvin, do, do you guys have a three-year-old daughter? Um, so we have a, I've got four daughters actually. Okay. But one of them. And they're all joining the girls club. Every one of them. Marvin's coaching the girls. He, right. You're stuck, man. Sorry. You're stuck. So Grace is seven, but my, but her younger sister is uh, five. She just turned five. Okay. I thought I saw a three-year-old there that was on Thursday, but. That was, um, I, yeah, my niece. My niece Got is it. four, I think. Jason, you want Bella to have a practice partner or what? Yeah, she wants to wrestle more than my boys do. My boys are old enough, but they don't want to wrestle, but Bella wants to. That's we funny. have a two and a half year old. <laughs> I can bring Bella. Hey, Marvin, I'll trade you. I got three boys, man. I'll trade you one. I just get to pick which one I give you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I, any other questions? I want to know what the Kelseys are watching on TV. That's what I want to know. They're they're watching Frozen Two. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 We are watching you guys. I said it looks like we're looking at the ceiling, but we're, we're watching you guys. We have oh, it look like you guys are watching a sports event. Like you guys are, you guys are way too happy to be just watching us. There's no way yeah, you can watch us. Yeah, for sure. So Chidley, Chidley right. even dressed up. Look at you in your collared shirt. I love it. Woo! Like it. All for you, buddy. All for you. Yeah. yeah. The court date he had this afternoon was a smashing success. So he gets the. <laughs> That's, that's right. That's right, Brandon. That, that's why he didn't pack his, pass his background check. All right. All right. We have to do a background <laughs> check. I don't know. All right. Uh, Mrs. Glass, Marvin, uh, Peter, did you guys have any other questions? Tina? I think no, those are the non can, can you send out the stuff uh, about the certifications whenever you get a chance? Oh, yeah. So, okay, so the coaching stuff, and I can talk about it real quick. Um, I mean, we have some high expectations for our coaches. We, like, Kind of like I said, is we are not going to be those coaches who 
at an IKWF tournament are yelling at their kids, period. Uh, we just have higher expectations for them. Um, so this is just kind of like the expectations. I mean, if you know me and you know the rest of our coaches, you kind of know how we do business. And I've talked to you already a lot about it. So I know you're on the same page. Um, but then as far as the certification process goes, you go to the IKWF website. And here, I'll pull it up right now. So here's the IKWF website. If you hit membership, you go down to the bottom. It's called Wrestling Leader Membership. And there's three things you have to do if you're brand new. Background check, which has to be done every other year. Um, so some of us didn't have to do that. That's why Chidley's okay right now. He just came from court, but they don't know. Um, safe sports certification has to be done every single year. And then the wrestling leader membership, what that does is when you go to the USA Wrestling website, it'll have you do this. It's called the National Coaches Education Program. And it gives you different levels. You want to do copper, bronze, silver, gold. You only need to do the copper, the basic the basic level of coaching um, certification. There is a fee involved with all of this stuff, um, but just as a way to say thank you and reimburse you for that, um, there are some coaches things that we do in the off season and different things like that. We get you beer and whatnot, but then also we will give you a discount for the club's registration. Um, and if you already paid what you did, we would give you that hundred dollars back. Coach Hoger would handle that. <laughs> giving you the hundred dollars back. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I, I still gotta get through it, but I know you and I talked about it, but we'll uh, we'll talk yeah. some more. It, it is a process and it takes a couple of weeks. Like the, the, the actual background check takes some time. Um, some of the, some of the, some of the uh, training videos and stuff are common sense, but some of them make you think a little bit. Um, so it's good to just kind of go through that. Yeah, no worries. I, I know we make that stuff up as I go along anyway. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, once you do the safe sport and the background check and have your USA card, you can be in the practice room and then you have to have the uh, NCEP copper certification for uh, competition days. But once yeah. you have the other three, which are the first three you do, which are faster, by the way, then you can be in the practice room. You, I mean, you can do those other ones. You can knock them out in one night usually. Okay. What's up, Liam? Oh, and he's not, he's not here. For the copper certification? The other Liam, you, mean, you mean the other Liam. Sorry. You yeah, hey, other. Liam, I saw you do a double leg today. You got a mean <laughs> double leg, buddy. Your partner was a little big, but. Yeah, that's all right. Good job. So, um, Adam, I was going to say, who, I don't know which, uh, which parent was just asking about the, the coach's card. I yeah, always suggest to our coaches, jump to the bronze. Because if your child participates in regional sectionals or state copper certifications generally are no longer allowed on the mat. I think starting next year, I think that's a new bylaw going into effect. That's news to so, me. That Thanks was toyed that. around with. Yeah. That was toyed around with last year. And I think they tabled it because of COVID, but they, I think they wanted a higher level of coaching certifications for the, uh, the state events. So oh. to kind of prevent some of the, um, some of the, Stuff crazy parents from being out there yeah people that were actually serious but it doesn't yeah. cost any extra and it's it's not that much harder of a certification all right so you can go to bronze without doing the silver or the copper i believe have... so yes you can uh yeah. one of our two of our coaches have bronze but not copper everybody else has copper i'll let anybody do it because they let me do it so anybody can so you, you and Stribley went right to bronze. Um, I unfortunately did it the hard way. I did copper, then bronze. Um, but I think it was copper. I want a platinum membership. How do I get the platinum? Well, That's Swanson and I are talking about doing a silver certification. That, that one's definitely more intense. So, yeah. Because then you can go um, to the. Yeah, and you can't yeah. do that online either. That one you got to do in person, I think. Yeah. Adam, I do believe they're running the four finger discount right now. If you're interested, I'm in. I am in for the four. You know what? I got to tell you, Brum, that's not the first time in the last two weeks I've heard that joke. So don't <laughs> think you're original or anything, okay? Getting old. Right. 
How's it going? Oh, it's hanging in there. I've got that one a couple times. Don't worry. It's hilarious I, every time. Um, let's see here. Anything else we got to talk about? I think that's it, right? Desiree, did you have any questions for the girls or anything? Yeah, I guess I wanted to let you know I had a conversation earlier with, I forget the name of the coach. Um, I was talking about pickup for some shirts that we ordered. Um, that was me. Oh, yeah, Coach Hogar. And we had just kind of chatted about how um, at Gracie's age, she's seven, almost eight, there might be some opportunity for her to stay the extra half hour to work with group two a little bit. Um, Absolutely. We'll see how things go, but I know she was there on Thursday and she was thinking some of the youngins might be a little too young. Yeah, yeah. It's very flexible. It is very flexible. And it's not like it's a hard line. Like coach says, he has, to, they have to do this. If you feel like you want to try and push them a little bit, th this is where it gets tricky, right? It gets tricky when we start showing brand new technique. Um, so if we're showing something in that middle group that Grace has never had, like you'd have, it's like prerequisite information she might need to know. Yeah. Then we might be a little more flexible and say, okay, well, instead you got to go with group one today, right? Yeah, um, fundamentals for sure, but maybe just yeah. I call it sparring, but I don't know what it's called in wrestling. Yeah, yeah, no, no big deal. If, if, you, if you feel you want to give her a push, especially like towards the end of practice and let her stick around for that half hour, great. I mean, that's not a problem. Well, sounds good. Yeah, I know. Um, it is, we'll let you know. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Yep, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Are we good? Did I forget anything? Oh, I think we're good. So, hey, we need to just make sure we keep that on the radar then, Adam, about the bronze. Yeah, that's true. Harry, are you signing up to be a coach or what? Yes, you did bronze last year when it was free, man. That's true. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the year, like uh, there's like two weeks left on the free thing. I'm like, I better just do it. Uh -huh. I didn't. I, I did not do it. I should have. Harry, are you gonna? I think you're muted. Your little speaker button. What's happening? All right. Are we gonna be able to convince you to be a coach or what? Uh, it takes a lot of your time, don't it? Well, you know what. If you don't, your wife has to. I saw that video. Yeah, maybe my <laughs> wife could do it. She likes, uh, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I have patience for uh, Adam. All right. No, I get it. I get it. Maybe. All right. Well, hey, what, what's up? I'm asked, maybe. I'll think about it, you know. If, if you decide you want to, let me know if anything comes up. Or maybe even after, after he sticks around for a year or two, you might change your mind. Let me know. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. welcome. That you just got to pass your background check. Even yep, yep. coaching wise, it's it's not like it's not like coaches like even last year Fox Valley had we had twenty some coaches. Do we not? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like it's not like coaching. We're expecting you to show any moves or do anything like or like to discipline the kids or try to quiet kids down. But like just when we break out, it, the more coaches we have, the nicer it is to especially when it's a loud room. In order to like just okay, we had like last year I think we a couple times we had like one coach per like set of kids and it made everything much smoother so it's not like we're asking everybody to like speak but it, the more coaches we have it makes it a little bit easier when we do break out sure sure yeah and anything that we can teach a four-year-old it's you know it, it's you know that's all we're asking you to do is just kind of make sure that they can replicate it you know what i mean so um you know the joke is you know it's like herding cats um you know if you've got the right temperament I, I, you know, myself, Jason is phenomenal. We can show you, you know, all the fundamentals that, that we're trying to teach, teach to your, your, your sons and daughters. So it's, it's more about temperament and so much less about experience. Yep. Hey, uh, John, I'm putting you guys on spotlight. So I, are we still recording this Holger? Do you want me to stop? Oh, I just want to make sure Brum's little, uh, shenanigans are still being on on film we're sending this to everybody yeah. all right guys yeah. i think that's a wrap unless anyone else had anything else yeah. all good 
All right. See you, Liam. See you. Bye, guys. Have a good weekend. Bye. Peace out.